Hi everyone. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at how to convert the standard form of a rational function into its general form. So in your notebook, please put down today's subtitle, which is Convert Rational Function Standard to General Form. So in today's lesson, what we really want to do is take something in standard form, such as the following, and how do we convert it to general form? Well, to provide some insight into the conversion process, if you look carefully at the rational function written in standard form, hopefully you'll realize that there's something very important going on. In fact, what we have happening here is a fraction added to a non-fraction. And if you were to go back to your skills obtained in junior math levels, hopefully you'll remember that in order to add a non-fraction to a fraction, you would need a common denominator. And in fact, that's all it really takes to convert from standard form to general form. All we have to do is find a common denominator and simplify. So let's take a look at this very simple procedure by converting the example that we just saw into general form. So please officially put that down as our first example. Convert y equals 3 over 2 times x minus 5 plus 4 into general form. So the first thing to ask yourself is what is the common denominator between the denominator 2 times x minus 5 and the denominator of invisible 1 under the 4? Well obviously in this example it will be the 2 times x minus 5. So to start showing our properly, we can simply start by recopying what we have so far, and then multiplying the constant by whatever it takes to get our common denominator. In this case, multiplying the 4 by 2 times x minus 5. And don't forget, the same thing must also be done in the denominator. Two times x minus 5. And when we simplify, we get the following. The first fraction doesn't change. But the second fraction becomes the following. 4 times 2 is 8. And we have the x minus 5 still hanging around. And now we can visibly see that the denominators are common, they're both 2 times x minus 5. Now that we have our common denominators, we can combine the two numerators. So we have 3 plus 8 times x minus 5 over the single common denominator of 2 times x minus 5. And when we do our simplification, we will obtain a final numerator of 8x minus 37 over 2x minus 10. And as you can see, this is perfectly written in general form. All right, let's try another example. This time, I'm going to insert a slight complication. The slight complication in this example is that there are two different and visible denominators to deal with. One of them is x minus 5 and the other one is a 5. So let's see how to get this one done. First, determine what is the common denominator between both of them. Well, to make it common, I can simply multiply the first fraction by 5 and I can multiply the second fraction by x minus 5. And so, to write your work properly, it could look something like this. First, I'll just rewrite my first fraction. So y equals 2 over x minus 5. And I'm going to show the work to obtain our common denominator. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 5. Multiply by 5, multiply by 5. And just for safety, I'm going to surround the original denominator with a bracket, because remember, it is a polynomial. 
Next, give yourself a bit of space so you don't lose yourself in your work. And we copy the second fraction, 4 over 5, and show the work for obtaining the common denominator. So multiply by x minus 5, and same thing on the bottom. Multiply by x minus 5. And when we simplify, we get 10 over 5 times x minus 5 plus 4 times x minus 5 over 5 times x minus 5. And as you can see, both our denominators are common now. So, at this stage, we are allowed to combine the numerators, giving us 10 plus 4 times x minus 5 over our common denominator, 5 times x minus 5. And our simplifying leads us to the final result of y equals 4x minus 10 over 5x minus 25. There we go, all done. This is in perfect general form. All right, I think it's time for you guys to try one on your own. Try converting this rational function in standard form to general form. Go ahead, pause the video and try it now. Okay, let's see how you guys did. First things first, I'm going to figure out what's a common denominator or how to get it. Well, it's easy. The first fraction, all I have to do is multiply everything by 4. And the second fraction, all I have to do is multiply everything by 2 times x minus 1. So, let's take a look at the procedure then. So, I'm going to recopy the first fraction, negative 3 over 2 times x minus 1. And I'm going to write the operation to get my common denominator. So, times 4 times 4. I'm going to give myself some space. And rewrite the second fraction. And again, I'm going to show my work for the common denominator. Times everything by 2 times x minus 1. And then I'm going to simply go through the simplification process. That will give me negative 12 over 8 times x minus 1. And on the second fraction, that one will give me plus 10 times x minus 1. And on the denominator, I will also obtain 8 times x minus 1. And there we go. It's very clear that both my denominators are now common. Further simplifying will give me the numerator combined of negative 12 plus 10 times x minus 1 over my single common denominator of 8 times x minus 1. And our final simplification will give us 10x subtract 22 over 8x minus 8. And there we have it. Perfect general form. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That is how we convert the standard form of a rational function into its general form.